best thing the Warriors did when Steph and Clay were out was basically give Jordan the ball and say, green light, do whatever you want to do. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake, but just gave him the green light. Hello, welcome to the Hoop Collective podcast. We talk about the NBA, which we're doing on Monday morning. Joining me from Phoenix, Arizona, where he is right now covering the Suns and Mavericks series. It's Ann Stake, Ann Staked, Anscapes, Mark J. Spears. But Spears, you're going to be bouncing around this uh, this round, right? Uh, I'm going to stay out west. Keep it easy, at least for the first four games. I'm in Phoenix, which isn't a far ride from my home in the Bay, and then do the two games in San Francisco and then kind of go from there. Yeah, we'll I'm going to stay out here. We'll talk about that Warriors Grizzly series in a little bit. Um, joining me from one floor above me, I believe yes. <laughs> in Boston, <laughs> Andrew Lopez and I relocated from new Orleans, the new Orleans uh, uh, Phoenix series to the Celtics uh, buck series. We covered game one on Sunday, Andrew Lopez. What's up, man? Um, I would like to go back to Phoenix, not for any uh, games or anything like that, but it was 98 degrees in Phoenix when we left. Uh, it was like 50 when I walked back to the room last night. So I would I would very much like that weather back. Well, I'm just going to say to you that I'm 16 days on the road. When I left, I was planning on Phoenix in New Orleans. I have one non-suit long sleeve shirt, which I'm wearing right now. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm limping through the Boston portion of this um so speaking of limping is that a terrible is that a terrible terrible what you mean uh transition before we talk about the second round um zion williamson um gave his first interview in what andrew six months yeah since uh september 29th or 28th uh, ever ever since media day first time we had talked to him yeah so um you were there actually all three of us were there in new orleans uh for game six um and Zion, what was your main takeaways from what Zion had to say, um, you know, talking for the first time in so long? Well, the, I mean, obviously the big one was the, the declaration that he would sign the extension, right? I mean, obviously there's been so much talk about him, whether or not he would. Can you real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you say exactly what he was asked? It, it, I mean, you may not have it in front of you, but can you say what he was asked and then what he, what he said? I oh, think it is the, very simple. Will you sign the extension? If offered, that was the key part of that. The question is if offered. Uh, and his answer was, of course, of course, I couldn't sign it fast enough. So he, he made it clear that is what he would want to sign. We talked to David Griffin, you know, shortly after that. And Griff made it a point to say, you know, those discussions are, are going to be a challenge, a challenge. That was the word that he used. Um, it, 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 I don't think it's going to be a simple negotiation. When, when July 1st hits, because of the fact that he's only played 85 games in three seasons. So, but I mean, that was kind of the, the, the biggest thing that I took away. He, he kind of danced around some other things that we asked him in terms of, you know, is the foot healthy uh, or anything like that. But I mean, he just, he seemed like his upbeat self. I mean, that's what he has been when he has talked to the media. When we have seen him around the team this year, he has looked to be you know, enjoying his teammates, especially in the last two months since he got back from Portland uh, from doing his rehab up there. He's he's looked like he's bought in, at least to the team side. I know, you know, one of the things he, he had a lot of praise for Willie Green, um, you know, who is now his his third head coach in in three years in the NBA. Um, really his fifth head coach in five years when you think about he's it. He's never played for high Willie. School. <laughs> yeah, and he's Willie's never, never even him, seen yeah. him practice. <laughs> so that he had a lot of praise for Willie. And I think, uh, you know, he, he seemed to be excited in that moment, but you know, uh, when, when it comes to Z it's, it's more like, what, what, what can you actually show me instead of what, what can you say? So that's, that's where I'd like to see where, where this next step goes. Spears, before we talk about the extension, um, you've been around the league a long time. You've seen a lot of players. You've seen a lot of players go through a lot of things. Zion's situation is pretty unique. Um, uh, what did you What did you think about what he had to say and didn't have to say when he finally spoke? 
Well, I, I think in New Orleans, man, it's it's uh, there was probably a big breath of relief, right? Um, this is a franchise that Chris Paul left, um, understandably so, when the ownership situation was in disarray. Anthony Davis walked out and had a, a war short that said, uh, that's all, folks, which still bothers my mother. She's still upset about that. And the She's city of New like- Orleans is so upset about that that after the last um, hurricane they had, a note, I went into a grocery store and everything was gone except for Anthony Davis, like ruffles. Those were the <laughs> only thing. That even, even in tragedy, people refused to eat, right? Um, Drew Holiday quietly, in a very professional way, asked out and got his wish. And um, I, I'm sure now that, well, I heard a lot of people come up to me and say, man, thanks for talking to T- CJ. And I'm like, thank me, thank him. <laughs> CJ is the one that says, CJ McCombs, the one that says he wants to finish his career there. And it just made the people there feel so good because there's always been this uh, exodus of superstars. And uh, one thing I like about what CJ said is that he actually has gotten to know what the city is like instead of being like most NBA players that come through to just sit in their hotel and order some gumbo uh, from room service. And he, he's fallen in love with the city. Um, he wants to finish his career there. But I think ultimately, hearing Zion say that was music to their ears in New Orleans because of the past. And, and I think CJ and Willie Green are the reason why. Like, CJ is the big brother that Zion needed in the locker room. And I remember, and I know I'm going on a tangent here, Brian, but uh, Melo's rookie year, uh, Kiki Vanderway was thinking about getting LaFonso Ellis just so he could be there for Melo in the locker room, and he didn't. Years later, Melo told me he wished that was the case. So now C- CJ is a guy that a vet who's been there, who could hold Zion accountable. And then Willie, I mean, these players seem to love him and want to run through the locker room for him. So I wonder if you guys would have asked Zion that question in December, would he have felt the same way? If you asked him that in Portland, would he have felt the same way? But I think now that he sees how cool this environment is, how great it's being coached. Um, you got a big brother and CJ, like, why would he not want to be part of that? Well, uh, I'm not sure it's as simple, though, because he said he'd sign the extension, but I don't know what extension is. I mean, they're going to offer him an extension, I would assume, right, Andrew? He will be offered yes. something. Yes. Um, but, why, but, but, and this is with all due respect to Zion, at some point he's got to play, man. Like, we, we can't just keep, putting him on this pedestal for one season for potential. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I, they, they treat him with so, such kid gloves um, because of the potential, but it, they did really well without him. Well, and, that's what and I'm I saying. I wonder if it's in, and, and Andrew can hang and handle this more than me. Like, I really wonder what the guys in the locker room thought about the cloud of his situation. Well, I do think that that's something that contributed to the one and 12 start, the three and 16 start at at that time. You remember it was, you know, Oh, well, well, we hope to have him back for opening day. And then it was, okay, well, it's two weeks for scanning. And then it's two more weeks. And I think there was this kind of, when is Z going to come back? I don't want to say save the team, but like, when is he going to come back, add his 27 and seven to the lineup and we're going to take off. And I don't think it was after until early December when maybe everybody involved was like, all right, maybe he's not walking through that door and we need to you know, kind of go about our business without him. And then, you know, we, they did, they had a, a, a nice finish without him, but I mean, this was still a team that finished 36 and 46. They were still in the play-in for a reason. Um, so I think they're very much like to see him back with the, with this team, especially. Right, but that's that's the thing. Does the finish, and I know David Griffin going on the record saying this is going to be difficult, I think the Pelicans believe, like I, I, my interpretation, Spears, is some people felt the exact same what you just described is, okay, he signed the extension, he's locked in. 
move on with your day, New York Knicks, move on with your day, whomever he's not leaving. I don't think that's guaranteed yet. Um, I think the way the Pelicans finished this season and look, they gave the Suns all they could handle. It took Chris Paul absolutely slugging some, some home runs in this series to get the Suns through it. Uh, Booker came back and battled his way through, hit one big shot that carried him over the edge in six, but that could very easily have gone the other way. We could have played seven. I think that gave the Pelicans some leverage here. I think the Pelicans have a bit of leverage to say, listen, we got a good thing going. Brandon Ingram is an all-star. We now have a a terrific player in CJ McCollum. I'm sure they're going to be in the marketplace. I, I, I would not be surprised depending on what happens with that lottery pick. Uh, the late, oops, I almost said Lakers. We have to go to work on that one. The lottery pick <laughs> that they own that belongs to a Western Conference uh, t- team, um, that they could potentially trade it. Um, I think the player that they would potentially look to attach to that pick would be uh, Devontae Graham because Jose Alvarado's arrival. Um, but they've got some things that they can do with this roster. Um, that are independent of Zion. And of course, they're going to be better with him. They want him. They want him in. But I don't think they're offering a five-year max. Um, I think they'd like to sign him for five years, Andrew. I mean, you want to, you know, when um, when they signed uh, when they signed Z- when they signed Brandon, they got um, no player option. Is that right? Yeah, that's the biggest thing right now is I think when they, and, and you got to remember the, the negotiations with Brandon were also after they had, not signed him to an extension the year before. Right. Um, so they were able to uh, kind of get what they wanted in terms of five straight years, no options, no anything. And I, I would think that is what they would want here in a, in a Zion situation, especially when they're going to be trying to, but like, I, I don't think it's just, it's going to be the five one eighty one four-year player option. I don't, I don't think it's going to be that. Yeah. Right on I don't July think one. they're going to want to guarantee him. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Supercuts. Let's face it, life is busy. Between work and family and more work, our to-do lists have a way of getting longer instead of shorter. Luckily, Supercuts is here to make at least the haircut part of your life easy. Supercuts is perfect for people who need a haircut, but don't have a ton of time for a haircut. No more scouring the web for salons with availability. You can use the Supercuts app to find the location nearest to you and check in or just walk in. Another bonus, the salon shows estimated wait times, so you know exactly what you're in for. That way, you're only in salon when you need to be. Don't expect to stay a while. As for the cut itself, it's always super solid. Thanks to Supercut's highly trained stylists. Get in, get out, and get to that thing that you needed a haircut for. Whether you've got a big presentation coming up or a wedding, or you just need some upkeep, Supercut's makes getting a haircut effortless. It's not just any haircut. It's Supercuts. Check in now on the Supercuts app or on Supercuts.com. The full five years. I think they're going to want, I mean, I think they'll come into it not wanting him to have a player option. In other words, it's going to be a five-year contract and we'll have protection and they'll want to haggle over what triggers are protection. The, the, the most comparable one most recently is Joel Embiid, um, who signed a max contract that it was a max in terms of uh, you could he could earn up to the max salary, but he had to hit all these triggers. And by the way, he did, and they subsequently signed to an extension. The difference between Embiid and and Zion Spears is that when even though Embiid missed a lot of his first three years, he was really on the same page with the organization throughout the time. Remember, he gave himself or was happy to have the nickname the process. Um, he was he was fully bought into that. Um, There was a much more workability going on with the front office that hasn't shown here with Zion. So um, he definitely praised the coach. That's good. But um, I, this is going to be, well, I also think negotiation for sure. Embiid wasn't the star coming in that Zion was either. Um, You know, so I I think that's part of it. He hadn't, I I think basketball people kind of knew that he could be special but the world didn't know where Zion walked in like the most popular player since LeBron James. And if, if he's healthy, I mean, I think this Pelicans team is top four team in the West. Right. Yeah. But that's the continuing if, and 
I just think for this group, after what they've done, you almost have to, you, to your point, Brian, you need some buy-in. Like, our, yep. But to Zion's point, and, and I think where a lot of players make mistakes, like I told Paul George, you're one of the smartest NBA players ever. Sign your deal and figure the rest out later. Right? <laughs> Paul George got out and got where he wanted to be in a year. Um, so... But I do think that swings both ways too. The, yeah. the Pelicans could sign them and make sure he's yeah. locked in, and then say that we happened can trade Nene. again. What happened in Nene? I'm trying to think of some other guys. Um, <clears throat> but I don't, I don't see the Pelicans wanting to move him. And if they, you know, if he's healthy, I mean, we know what he could do if he's healthy. <laughs> he's special I, if he's healthy. I, I'm, I'm loudly on the record. I would absolutely, positively not trade him, even if you can't come to terms on an extension this year. You still yeah. control the situation. He's highly motivated to play. I would you know, not but do you him. have a mentality if you're him, like in the back of your mind, when you know you've had all these injury issues and you're a big like that? And I heard what Anthony Davis said before he signed his last deal, man. He said one of the reasons why he signed it was he knew he's had some injury situations. Yeah. I, I could have. Yeah, AD could have taken two years and gone back to the market and got more money, but he took the full five. Yeah. With those injuries, with that size of a body, which with that strength, man, I. Again, this is I'm married on the side of caution, man. I'm signing that deal. I'm doing what he said. I can't sign it fast enough. Pelicans leverage. Yeah. Pelicans leverage. So um, I will say one thing that could get interesting. If the, and I am not a draft expert, we'll have Mike Schmitz and Gavoni in later on closer to that. But if the, let's say that the pick that the Pelicans own from the team in Southern California, let's say it jumps into the top four, which do you know off the top of your head, Lopez, what the percentage chances of the top four? I think it's like 30 something percent. Uh, 26.2. Okay. 26% of it going into the top four. I think there's like um, another like point, like a 2% chance that they're, that their pick at, um, wherever they're at, but oh, no, that's going to Charlotte now. So no, it is now 26. That's right. That's right. Was, they're not a lottery my pre, team. They made the playoffs. They play could get a top four pick. They can get a, they have a 26.2% chance to get a top four pick. They own the unprotected pick from the team from Los Angeles County that plays in crypto.com arena. Um, well, there's two uh, of them. That's true. But you don't want to say the name. The, the Clippers pick belongs to the, um, belongs unprotected to the clipper to the uh, thunder there will be no there will be no lottery pick uh well i shouldn't say that what if you could get another guy from duke in banchero okay this is what uh, thank you spears you're taking me right there let's say it goes into the top four forget about one let's just say it goes to three or four correct me if i'm wrong but i believe three of the top four projected players in this draft power forwards yeah right banchero Chad Holmgren, who's big, but is probably going to be a four in the NBA, maybe a three, four. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Jabari Smith from uh, Georgia. Is Georgia or uh, Auburn? Auburn, Auburn, sorry. Um, And then probably uh, Jade Nivey from from Purdue is the other sort of top four guy. So three of the top four power forwards. So if you really want to see – why well, things could get wild um, and the Zion market could be like, it could, the, the eyebrows could pop up. The, um, the lottery is two weeks from this podcast coming out. Uh, it's uh, May 17th, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night. So always a big day, but <laughs> um, that, that, that pick hops Lopez, boy, it could make something interesting. It could make, I mean, I, I would still hold on to Zion, but it would certainly, make a, a new factor in the negotiations. I don't think any of those guys are as good as Zion or have the top end of Zion, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. No, but I think you could have uh, maybe, maybe outside Apollo who, who would have a, a similar type game. Jabari Smith is a, a good shooter. Could maybe play in some lineups next to him. Uh, Chet, I, like you said, I, where does Chet play? I think that's going to be fascinating. I think he is a very good player. Uh, if I'm in the top four, the one I have my eye on right now is I'd have my eye on Jade Knight if I'm the, I'm the Pelicans. 
So you're know, saying that? So you're saying if they got a top because they they do need a point guard. So if they say they got a top four pick, it wouldn't necessarily mean they'd be drafting one of those. And I think Jay not is necessarily four, probably. And I, I think it would. I mean, I could see some lineups where Jabari plays. Um, by the way, Jabari's dad played at LSU. Uh, I think. I mean, I think they would be okay if they were picking there, especially if they were three or four with if there was a run on the three bigs and they were sitting there at four and they were able to take Ivy or if they, you know, they felt like they could get a, a Jabari or, you know, or at that point, Hey, if somebody wants to come up and pay for Chet and we can get something else or, or pay yeah. for, for Paulo. Uh, I think well, that, that, that happens. more than happy. Let, let me, throw, let me throw this in. Cause I, I got some, I got to see Ben Cheryl up close um, uh, twice um, in the NCAA tournament. Um, I got to see Holmgren three times if it's home grin it's going to take some time it's going to take some time if it's been and it could be the, same, the nicknames that home grin and zion if they were if they were playing together on the same team and i, and I could see that i, I could see home grin coming off the bench at first i he's, i don't think see physically him being a starter um but that kid banchero boy he came on real nice down there in there March. He, he, he came on real nice in March. Well, let's he's see what happens good, in the lottery. Let's see what happens in the lottery. It's still twenty six percent chance. Banchero might make you think about some things. All right, well, let's see. We'll just bring it up. All right, so um, we have we have two playoff games. Cutting the price of your wireless bill feels good, really good. Actually, it feels great. You should try it. So cut your bill by switching to Straight Talk Wireless. Now offering our forty five dollar silver unlimited plan that's unlimited high-speed data and five gigabytes of hotspot for just 45 dollars a month get nationwide 5g on america's largest most dependable networks so why pay a whole lot for your data when you can get unlimited for a whole lot less the 45 dollars silver unlimited plan from straight talk straight talk wireless no contract no compromise at 60 gigabytes we reserve the right to review your account for usage in violation of straight talks terms and conditions a month equal 30 days. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. 5G capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. Tonight, that we're not going to know what happened in uh, Spears. You're going to be at one of them. Uh, probably, the unfortunately, the more, um, probably, probably, the more interesting series on, this, on these nights because of the unfortunate injury to, to Embiid. We'll see if he can come back in three or four. I know Woj said it was possible. Ramona Shelburne also saying he's supposed to get uh, checked out on Wednesday or Thursday, and hopefully they'll, he'll be healing. Okay. Um, the series that I think has got the chance to be um, a, you know, a, a very interesting one in this round is, is the series that Lopez and I are on, which is, um, which was, is Buck Celtics. Um, uh, Lopez. Um, I've seen this before where a team comes off one series and gets into another and the change of pace slaps them in the face. And uh, this can be, this can be difficult for fans. I think to understand, certainly when I was young in my career, I didn't understand it. How can you possibly not be aware of the bucks? You, you play in the league with the bucks. You play them many times yep. in, over the course of the year. It's not like you don't know who Brooke Lopez is. It's not like you don't know who Bobby Portis is. It's not like they're starting lineup. Um, was something they'd never seen before. Actually, it was something the Celtics never seen before, but they played it in the last round after Middleton got hurt. But yet, when you go out there uh, and actually play against it, it's just shocking. It, it, it just knocks you off your game. And you, see, you know where you see it? Historically, as I've watched teams, you see it in passing. Um, when, you th- when you play against a team that's that big and you're not used to it, and you throw, you think, oh, I have this passing lane, and all of a sudden you don't because their arms are longer. It seems really basic and almost dumb, but when you don't know what passes you can throw because you're not used to how big the team is against you, it messes you up. And let me just give you the stu- the numbers. In game one, the Bucks, who started Portis, Lopez, and Giannis, and have perimeter defenders that play high pressure. The Bucks generated 17 deflections, 17 deflections in that game alone. And 
I am going to have our stats people look it up. I didn't have time to do it before the pod today. I will, I'll bet the Nets had more than 17 deflections in that series, that four game series, but I'll bet it wasn't a lot more in the whole series combined. <laughs> and so the, the Celtics got shell shocked by how big, tough and strong the Bucks were, especially coming off the Nets. It is human nature. I know that that Nets series was a big playmaking series. Kyrie was throwing in stuff. Durant was throwing in stuff. You know, there were haymakers being thrown, especially for the first three games. But it wasn't played at the defensive level that the Celtics are going or that the Bucs are going to play in this series. And now all of a sudden, Milwaukee's got home court and it's now incumbent on the on the Celtics to 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 raise their level of offense to to meet this. That's what I, my takeaway was and what I'm going to be looking forward to going into the, the Tuesday night, Lopez. Yeah, the, the biggest thing was I think both Udoka and Jalen Brown kind of made passing comments to it yesterday of, of being surprised uh, and that they shouldn't have been at, at this point of the level of physicality that the Bucks were going to play. Um, I think for for most of the game, the it was it was officiated in a way that lent itself to a lot of contact, um, which I'm sure Drew Holiday appreciated the way he likes to play defense, which I'm sure the Marcus crowd in Martin, Boston's had something to say about Scott Foster. They did. Uh, that was the first time I had heard that about a referee. Clearly, we I think all three of us heard it uh, in many different forms in in New Orleans during that uh, about Jay Crowder, about Jay Crowder yeah. during that first round series. Yeah. But yeah, it was to me, it was officiated in a way that kind of led itself to contact and the Bucks took advantage of that. I mean, they were, they were very physical at the point of contact. They were very, very physical on drives. Um, Boston just couldn't get anything inside the arc. They were 10 of 34 inside the arc. They took three jumpers. Um, I think they were 10 of 31 in the paint. They were over three, over three outside the paint. Uh, Udoka mentioned, he's like, we, we had mid ranges. We just, we didn't take them. We would either try to barrel into the paint or we would settle for threes. And they shot 36% on threes. They were 18 to 50, uh, but I don't think they want to shoot 50 threes again. Yeah. Two stats that blew my mind about this game real quick, not to interrupt you, but I, otherwise I'll forget. Um, the fewest two point makes in the 75 year history of the Celtics franchise. They had 10, two pointers. They did make, I think 18 threes. 75 years, playoffs and regular season, 10 two-pointers. The second thing is their average shot distance for the game was 18 feet. 18 feet. Now, it's one of those things where it's it's the average. I don't think they probably took many actual 18-footers. That's like the, I think, I think it was the, one actual 18-footer. I, was was, I looked at it last night. <laughs> that's like the incredible LeBron stat. I think LeBron's career averages are 27, 7, and 7. Never had a game with 27 7. But he has never had a game of 27 7 7. That is an absolutely incredible statistic. I mean, you would think at the amount of games he would play, he would just fall ass backwards into that. But it just goes to the point your point you're making is that yep. basically they couldn't score inside. And so they had to chuck a bunch of threes, which, you know, they made a lot. But Milwaukee, that's exactly how Milwaukee wants to play him, Spears. Well, I'll be honest. Uh, I was on a plane during that game. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> so I, don't, I, 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 I believe the expert on that game to you because I didn't see any of it. Well, I can't talk much about the Memphis game because with the safe return of live events, you can actually be there to catch all the action in person with vivid seats. That's right. Every alley-oop slam, every one-timer, every sideline grab can be experienced live. And with vivid seats rewards, you can earn rewards like free tickets. All you have to do is collect stamps, redeem, and repeat. It's that easy. From upper level to courtside, Vivid Seats has you covered for all the events that matter to you. So grab your tickets today and cheer on your favorite team from the stands. Visit vividseats.com to download the app today. Vivid Seats. Life happens live. Andrew and I were working during the Memphis Golden State game. I mean, I watched. I could talk later. about that one. We, we did watch the end of it. That end was pretty nice. We did watch the end of it. And we we watched frame by frame on the Draymond ejection. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out to Draymond, by the way, uh, who um, got ejected, um, came out, you know, showered, came out to the tunnel to wel welcome his team back in. And then Draymond, you know, who, you know, his number one job is to play basketball and uh, to play defense particularly. 
Um, his offense is um, his offense is getting worrisome again. Um, he he really got away with a quasi Ben Simmons moment at the end of that last series where he, he was basically open underneath the basket and he threw it out to the three point line. It was a better decision than Ben Simmons because he was throwing it out to an open three point shooter, but he basically had a free layup that he didn't take. He later explained that it wasn't a Ben Simmons situation, but the fact that he had to, to, to um, make that case was a little bit worrisome. Also, as soon as he went out of the game after that ejection, the, the Warriors started playing a lot better on offense, but we'll set all that aside for a second. Yeah, I, I love Draymond uh, finishing uh, the game and then yeah. knowing good content, running off to his hotel room and immediately recording a podcast uh, <laughs> ab- ab- about the game. That was uh, hats off to Mr. Green. Well, I mean, I guess he could get some barbecue uh, room service, right? He can't really hang out in the streets of Memphis, so I, he had time. <laughs> All yeah. right, it was a it was an early game. Um, the one thing that's interesting to me about that game was John Morant had a big game scoring wise, but he had to work for his man. He, they, I thought the defense they played on him, including the last shot in particular was, was pretty great. A lot, a lot of helping, a lot of tough shots. And he's just so good that it, he could still make a lot of them, but he had to, Work for every bit of that 30 plus game. And Jaron Jackson had a great game as well. But you had Steph and Clay and Gary Payton II, who started in foul trouble from the beginning. Draymond Green's out of the game in the middle of the second quarter. And they still lost. I agree. And that, that's a that game Memphis to, has to home, win. Memphis has crushing, to win that game. That's a that's a crushing loss. And if you're the Warriors, you're like, we didn't even play that good. We were in foul trouble. That's not going to happen every game. And all the fouls slowed, slowed the pace down. I think if I'm the Warriors, I'm feeling pretty good about, Plus, you know. when did the, when did the Warriors travel? Like they would, they found out who they were playing. I realized they, they were probably preparing for Memphis. Memphis had the lead. The Warriors found out they were playing who they were playing Friday night. Yeah, they didn't fly Friday night. They flew Saturday, got in late Saturday for an afternoon. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and cry. I mean, Memphis had to play. It, Memphis had less rest, but they were playing at home. Yeah. And, you know, that was a type of game where you would catch them. You know, it was a great opportunity for Memphis to go up 1-0. Yeah. And, uh, and Memphis and Minnesota is so close that Ja was able to go to the Allen Iverson uh uh, high school all-star game, which I, I don't know where exactly that was at, but he certainly looked um, spry um, dancing on the sidelines there. Um, keep in mind this, too, that after the Warriors play and Memphis play game two, they don't play again till Saturday. So you're giving these old dogs three days to get their bodies right, three days to rest, Steph, three days to rest, Clay, three, I mean, if they if they somehow, even if they split, but if they could somehow get this second one and then have three days off before playing at home, yeah, I mean, this is, <laughs> I hate to say must win early, but the Grizzlies have a must win in game two for sure. Yeah, and same with the Celtics Bucks series. There's three days off between two and three, and I'd like to say thank you because this old dog I'd like to have a couple of days to recover after all the time on the road. Um, yeah, you know it was a a really interesting final play. And by the time this pod comes out, it'll be kind of you know old by then. But they basically ran in football terms. They ran a jet sweep for Morant. They put him way in the backcourt, and he gets this running start and then um was it bain somebody like i don't care who but they they pitched him the ball it was like an option play it was a great play and he comes flying off and again to keep it in football terms clay thompson set the edge unlike what happened against um minnesota where you know uh ant went for the pick anthony edwards went for the pick and uh you know basically then Ja was able to choose his route to the to the rim um, Clay played much better defense on it. And, 
I'm sure that the Warriors, because I think um, Ja was three of three uh, in late game situations in last uh, three of three this year uh, on last possession shots to tie or, or go ahead. Um, and I'm sure they studied that and I'm sure they went over it and I'm sure that they knew that Ja prefers to go left in those situations. And, and he prefers he still- to go in the paint, which they didn't allow him to do. He, he was outside the lane when he took that shot. He had a really difficult angle to make. He that. still could have made it. He yeah. still could have made it. He's I think, I think yeah. he thought he was going to be a little bit closer. I think Clay cut it off. Yeah. And he was just yeah. a little bit further to his left than he, than he wanted to be. Yeah. So, yeah, they, but I agree. And then, you know, they bring Poole off the bench, which I, you can tell that Steve Kerr is going to be juggling, trying to weigh that lineup because they're just not as good defensively with that lineup with pool with, with pool and the three guard lineup, but he's so good on offense. I mean, well, next time we have Bobby Marks on, we'll go over the, uh, we'll go over the, the finances Spears. They're going to have to give Jordan pool. How much he's eligible for the you know, He was a 28th or 29th pick. Yeah. He's in the same draft class as Ja and uh, and Zion. So, like Ja and Zion, eligible for an extension this summer. They're going to have to pay him, man. They're going to have to pay him. I don't know. You know, I don't know how much, but yeah, I, they may have to go deep on him, and they're already paying so much money. He is. He. I mean, I. I don't regret voting for for Ja for most improved. I know that that's a, a thing. Um, I'll stand proudly on that choice. Um, but talk about a come up. I mean. Yeah. You uh, know what? I, I, an opposing, uh, uh, another, a coach from another team told me, he said the best thing the Warriors did when Steph and Clay were out was basically give Jordan the ball and say green light. Do whatever you want to do. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake. But just gave them the green light. They also, and I wonder how he looks back at it now, like he spent a lot of time in the G League. Yeah. A lot of time in Santa Cruz, and he got the green light there as well. Yeah, these like the Warriors would have a game and he'd be like, Yeah, Jordan Poole had 40 in Santa Cruz, yeah. 38. And I'm like, dang. Like that's when I was starting to pay attention to what he was doing. And so the Warriors just did a great job of letting him grow. I kept hearing that his work ethic was the best on the team. I was like, best on the team? Oh, better than Clay and Steph? Like, best on the team? And so then, like, they, he built himself, credit to him. The Warriors built him into, you know, credit to Chris DeMarco. They built him into this. Yeah, Kendra Andrews um, uh, from ESPN, uh, she has a story that came out today on Jordan Poole's development where she talks to Chris DeMarco, who's uh, one of Steve Kerr's assistants, um, <laughs> and is also the, the Bahamanian national coach. Um, I don't know I don't know if the, the Bahamas will ever get their guys together, but if they do, yeah. do you know who's on the Bahamanian oh, national yeah. team? I talked to one yesterday. Beyond Clay? <laughs> Clay, DeAndre. Oh, no, not Clay. USA basketball would have oh, to right. grant he, him. He, that's right. He played that. That's right. Yeah. Clay, well, Clay could play for the Bahamas. He's from Bahamian. Uh, Buddy Heald. Oh, Buddy. Anyway, that's right. Clay played for USA basketball. He's ineligible. Um, in fact. So it's basically those three, but. Quite frankly. You could just um, me and the rest of us could join the team and they they beat some some folks. <laughs> quite, quite frankly, and I mean this is real talk. Where we are with American centers, yeah. Let's see if we can get uh, DeAndre Ayton nationalized. <laughs> yeah, right. um, uh, Steve Kerr, see if you can work on that. Uh, He's because, been here for uh, a need... while. He's been here since high school, right? I agree. I'm proud to yeah. I'm proud to make him a full blooded American. Oh, I can't I can't see it. I know. I don't think so. I've been in his home with his mama. You went with him to Nassau. You did a great story. Or no, uh, no, it was uh, not Nassau. Um, God, no, I was. I went to his hometown. I thought his hometown was Nassau. Okay, yeah, yeah. I apologize. Um, but um, speaking of that, of uh, of that series, of the Aiton series, 
Um, you had a piece on Keeps offers a simple, affordable, and stress-free way to keep your hair via convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't even have to leave your home. 24-7 care and support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality and low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month and Keeps offers generic versions of two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. Treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Keeps has everything your hair needs, delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. Remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results. So act fast. When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash hoop to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash hoop to get your first month for free. Keeps dot com slash hoop. Landscape today about Devin Booker, about, um, you know, when he went through this last round trying to come back from this uh, hamstring injury, which he eventually got back for game six. It wasn't himself, but got out there and, and hit a huge three with a minute and a half to go that put the, the team that had to stay. I was talking to somebody with the Suns, and um, not everybody has made their ballots public, but the Suns are tracking it, those who have made their ballots public. And um, I think uh, they told me that they've, they've got about 30% of the ballots, and they think that Booker is in, has a decent chance of, um, of making first team All-NBA. Um, it doesn't matter where he makes first team or second team. He'll make either one, and he'll be um, eligible for a super max, which I assume they will sign him to. Um, but you know, Booker hey, Brian, has. Can we, can we go back real quick? Because yeah, I ahead. messed up. He is from Nassau. I'm I'm sorry. I was okay. thinking about Buddy Hill talking town. Okay, you you know, yeah, I I thought it was Nassau, or he's yeah. from he's from that island. Maybe he's from yeah. outside Nassau. No, he he's from Nassau. But I don't know. If we could go back real quick. And I'm sorry to interrupt that. But all right, Aiden is from Nassau. Yeah. So, um, but you talked to Booker. I saw you talking to him after the game on, um, you got him after the game in New Orleans the other night. Um, this is going to be a big Booker series um, because, you know, everybody's going to be watching Luca and, you know, Bridges will be out there, uh, Crowder will be out there, but you know, Booker's going to have to defend in this series too, and they're going to test his hamstrings, Pierce. Yeah. Well, Talk to uh, DeAndre Ayton, and he was telling me, he kept saying, we got a healthy book now. We got a healthy book now. So I maybe he's seeing something behind the scenes or yeah, practice or something to make him feel that, you know, book is back and, and that they're not worried about the injury no more. He was actually trying to play Booker, that is, in game five um, and was pushing to play in game five, and they wouldn't let him. And he's been working out with Jarrett Jack, former NBA player. And I think the good thing with that is Jack knows what's healthy and what's not. And he told Monty, he's like, look, he could play in game six and you don't have to worry about it. He's not going to be his all-star self just yet, but I don't think you, you have to worry about him not being able to help or, or, or perhaps getting re-injured. And um, Monty had confidence in what Jack said and what the medical staff had to say and, and allowed him to be back. And you, you're talking about a player who kind of quietly, you know, has a chip on his shoulder, uh, was, was spurned for MVP voting, despite the fact that his team had the best record in the league by far. I'm not sure he was spurned. I mean, I, I think if he I finishes he in the spurned. top five, I, it's... <laughs> Who's he I, replacing I, in the top three? You're, you're kicking out Embiid, Jokic, or, or, or Giannis? I, I mean, well, I understand. Well, but, but, but I don't know, man. And, and we could don't have to go into why I don't vote anymore. But when I did vote, like winning meant a lot. Like it, it, to me, it just seems kind of ridiculous that you have a team that had such a great record. They were eight games better than a team with the second best record. And none of their players were top three for MVP. Like, well, I we think, just fall on sudden level I think, stats. I like, think two of their players were considered. And, and they, at different times this year, I had yeah. Chris in my top five. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. I know the, the 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 NBA media world has this fascination with Joker, Joker, Jokic, and he's amazing. But he ain't won nothing. Like, <laughs> and, and we can keep making excuses for well, this person's out, this person's out. He's done nothing in the playoffs, right? I mean, I guess yeah, they did go to the West Finals. I give him that, but yeah, I think he's four to me. Like, I mean, look, I voted for Embiid, uh, but I mean, I. But I mean, Embiid, and I get it. Like, he was a one man band, basically, right? And they had a pretty good record. I just, and I'm not, I, look, Joker had an amazing season. Let me not give him his respect. He had an amazing season. So did Giannis. But this dude was the best player on the team that had 62 wins. No, but I don't think it's an insult to Devin Booker to say that he's not Giannis. I, I don't think that's an insult. Um, but, Giannis, but, 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 Giannis but is, is, gonna it, finish is it about how much should, but his team won. Giannis like, we team don't even won care about games winning anymore. The ring. We just I mean, care I, about when you see like social media now, right? So-and-so had 40 and 15 and 10, but they lost. They lost like, what about that part that they lost the game? This dude so, is a winner. Like winning should count for something. The Major. Guy who, the guy who won the NBA championship last year probably had a, a real good case for a third MVP a year ago, but there was a little bit of voter fatigue because he hadn't won in the playoffs. And this is still a – to me, it is still a regular season award. It's a regular not, season award, and so, his team won the most games. And they had guys that were out. Chris was out, and they Chris was out late in the season, and they didn't even drop. I mean, I think that speaks more to the depth of Phoenix than just the book, though. He's the best player on the best team. I don't know. Winning means something to me. I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 just, don't, I don't, I don't think it's fair to say he was. Pen- I mean, Chris Paul is a major reason why that team had sixty no, wins. I get that. I mean, they're sort of a victim of their own success that way. But I'll say this. Booker's last I'm year. I'm not the saying way Booker, he should be MVP, but he should have been in the top three. Somebody from that team should have been on that top three. I mean, that's not an unreasonable position. I would just say that take one of those guys out. I just, I mean, I mean, you're, and you're taking Jokic out because of his team's performance, but you look at his performance and it's hard to. I don't know. I let's put it this way: last year in the playoffs, in the closeout games. Booker was a killer. I to, f- to score forty points in LA, and I know AD was out. Forty points in Staples Center to take them out. He was a killer in the finals, even with uh, you know with the hamstring injury. The respect that he has gotten within the league over this last two seasons is not questioned. Whether he finishes fourth or fifth or whatever on that All MVP ballot. He's earned the respect, and he's about to get 200 million. And there could be no more respect than a team saying, "We're going to invest 200 million in you." Yeah. And so, but I will say this: like he, it was funny. Um, uh, there was a reporter in um, one of the TV reporters in Phoenix. I'm sorry, I don't know her name. She was asking some some of the Suns people whether uh, they thought Booker would be a good coach someday and monty like <clears throat> started like laughing he was like no way he has no patience he has 0.0 patience to be a coach <laughs> jay crowder same thing jay crowder just was shaking his head at the concept booker is incredible competitor no patience it's one of the reasons he's one of these other kobe acolytes and he has no patience for nuance he has no patience for not being regarded. And I think it's good for him and the Suns. I think if you're a Suns fan, you may say to yourself, we don't get the respect we deserve, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think you want Booker on edge. That's exactly where you want him. And no, um, your you story there. definitely kind of, <laughs> you know, shown some light on that. Yeah. But I that's going to be. Yeah. One time, Brian, I'll tell you the story real quick. Remember when Russ was was getting his triple double record, and he could have broke it in 
Phoenix, and this is young book, like the team's terrible and all that. And the team, the fans in Phoenix started cheering for Booker. I mean, for uh, Russell. And Booker goes livid. He started cursing out his own fans <laughs> and basically started guarding Book. I mean, uh, Russ himself kept him from getting the triple double and breaking it there, made a couple big threes, got fouled on one, and turned and yelled to his own crown, This is my MF in the house. <laughs> Don't forget it. This is my MF. And that's when I was like, Whoa. I didn't know he had all that, that to him, man. I like he had that that 80s competitive fire. He probably got a lot of that from his dad. But that's that's when I saw that he had he, potential to be a different He loves that level. era of basketball. Yeah. He drives 80. Now I'm gonna maybe embarrass myself because maybe they're 70s. I don't know. He drives old school cars. They're older. Yeah, just say old school. <laughs> he dresses old school, right? Andrew, yeah. didn't he have some old school? He did. He did. Maybe not all the time, but he had some he is, suits. He is an old soul. He is, he is definitely an old soul. More of those T-shirts in the finals with the cartoons and the players and right, stuff. Right. They should bring those back, by the way. There's, I think one of the great things that you could, uh, you could say to Booker, a compliment you could say is that he's old school. I, yeah. think, uh, I think he'd appreciate that. Um, we'll see how he does Monday night in that game. Check out Spears' story on Anscape. Thank you, Lopez. Uh, thank you, Spears. Lopez and I got to go over to Celtics practice right now. So we got to wrap this up. Thank you for listening to Hoop Collective Podcast. We'll talk to you guys later this week.